today we will cover our five most perfect messengers with absolutely zero flaws for your privacy and security. Liar! Well, not quite. We will share our five favorite messengers, well, more like four, but every service has its problems. Here are our top five picks, kind of in order, but not really. Don't take the ordering too seriously. We're gonna take you through each service really quickly and what we like and dislike about them to just introduce you to these awesome projects. If you want a more thorough video, subscribe and follow us from wherever you're watching this video because we're going to have the internet's most ultimate messenger comparison video dropping within the next few weeks. Let's go ahead and get started. I reluctantly present to you Messenger 5, Telegram. Look, we wanted to have the community choose one of these and you all frankly chose wrong, uh, but we still are going to feature it because we said we're gonna let the community choose one. Telegram has an overall questionable privacy and security situation with some previous issues, criticisms of its crypto security, requirements of a phone number, and the fact end-to-end -end encryption isn't a default for new messages. Features though are where Telegram excels. Even though I personally can't stand the interface, I constantly see people applauding the user interface and how it's frequently their favorite amongst all messengers. Telegram does have a plethora of features like extensive sticker support, video and audio calls, groups, channels, and just overall a large amount of customization. It does a lot of things. Telegram Pros include the usability, and while they do require a phone number, you can hide your phone number and instead use a username, so at least your contacts don't need to know what your phone number is. Telegram Cons include mostly concerns relating to privacy and security, to be honest, and also some upcoming annoyances like their built-in ads, which are likely coming this year. I don't know why you all picked Telegram over clearly superior options, but yeah, that's that. Messenger number four was chosen by us, so get ready for some better options. Number four is Matrix. Matrix is an open source federated protocol, so by itself, it, it is kind of a messenger, but not really. What really brings it together is the client. The most common client is Element, so we will be proceeding this analysis assuming you're using Element on Matrix. Matrix overall is a good improvement over Telegram, offering end-to-end -end encryption by default in direct messages and allowing the option in groups as well. Its crypto security seems a lot less attacked for its shortcomings, and they overall have a solid reputation. There are some valid concerns though regarding metadata leakage of Matrix, which do pose some privacy concerns for individuals. There's also a general shortage of some privacy and security features like disappearing messages. Finally, there are quite a few home servers that allow you to register for an account with no personal information whatsoever, just a username and a password, which is fantastic. Usability and features of Matrix do depend on the client you choose, but the main features are messaging, audio and video integration through Jitsi, rooms, which are like Telegram groups for larger communities, and then a plethora of honestly half-baked features like stickers, spaces, and some basic bots. The pros to Matrix are hands down its federated nature. This means you can register for Matrix through any home server and connect with other people using different home servers. It's really awesome. There are a plethora of clients, and with all this put together, 10 people can be using Matrix through 10 different means, which really makes this a unique situation for people. Aside from this, the privacy and security of Matrix are also overall solid and should fit the needs of most threat models. The cons to Matrix and element are where federation can also hurt it, since development can feel very slow at times, and even when it is quick, it takes time for everyone in the federated world to catch up. There is the concern of metadata leakage, and there are more minor concerns like how the largest home servers are incredibly slow to use. Matrix is really special and hard to cover in such a short time, so again, make sure you subscribe to catch our much more in-depth look in a few weeks. Did I mention we have a super awesome Matrix community of our own? You should should check it out below if you want to test this out. Messenger number three is one of the new kids on the block, and it's Session. Session was previously built on top of the world-renowned Signal Protocol, but recently migrated away from it, which brings up valid concerns behind its crypto. Either way, the secret sauce of Session is its lack of personal information requirement, end-to-end -end encryption, focus on very small metadata collection of its users, and how it onion routes all messages, which will one day be replaced by its low-key net, a blockchain Tor-like network. Usability is where Session has some issues. Messages can take a while to send, groups can take a massive amount of time to join, the apps were a bit buggy to use, and just to nitpick, the iPad experience is atrocious. At the moment, there are no audio or video calls, but you can send audio messages and some basic GIFs, and they do support disappearing messages. It's extremely minimal, which some people may enjoy, 
others, not so much. The pros to session rest in its unique registration process and unique direction with anonymizing messages between users, which could prove to be very valuable in the long run. Session cons are definitely that it feels incomplete and needs some polishing, and there are some security concerns regarding its crypto. Some people may also dislike how it uses cryptocurrency behind the scenes, but it's not something you ever need to see or interact with within the messenger itself. We recently posted a great interview with a session team member. Go check it out for more information. It was phenomenal. Messenger number two is Signal. Now, yes, before you leave your angry comments, there are some legitimate concerns with Signal, though most are greatly dramatized from decorative thumbnails and titles like these. Signal to this day is held to almost a gold standard for its security. Everything is end-to-end -end encrypted, almost every bit of metadata is protected, and Signal is designed in a way to still keep you safe even if their server is entirely compromised. They also have some great features like sealed sender and disappearing messages. To this day, the most notable drawback of Signal is its phone number requirement and its lack of aliases, meaning you have to exchange a phone number with every other contact to use it. In terms of usability, Signal has probably one of the most polished, simple, yet feature-filled experiences out there, with stickers, GIFs, audio and video calls on all clients, group management, and what most people you know are looking for, in a messenger. The pros to Signal are its world-renowned security and extremely easy clients that make it dirt simple for anyone you know to download and try it out. Signal's cons include its phone number requirement, some concerns regarding its upcoming cryptocurrency, which will be integrated into the app unlike Session, which you might not even know it's there, which we have no reason to believe directly impacts privacy and security yet and their occasional stubbornness. Signal is notorious for having a very headstrong approach in their development, leading to things like not publicly updating their server code for several months to likely keep their mobile coin a secret. This ultimately did not impact user privacy and security, unlike what some people are saying and suggesting but it is frustrating when the messenger has such a monopoly and receives so much praise that they can feel they can do no wrong. We did have a recent podcast discussion talking about these recent signal issues. It was actually published a good while ago before some of the more clickbaity videos came out, yet some people have still asked us for our thoughts on signal. It's been there on the podcast for a while. Check it out below. Now it's time for our number one. Oh, I'm excited. So this is actually a tiebreaker between Snapchat and Kick. <laughs> gotcha. So app number one is Briar. Briar is a peer-to-peer -peer messenger through Tor, meaning you are not trusting any central server when communicating with others. It's just you and the other person. The closest thing to this would be session in this video, but that works quite a bit differently. The privacy and security of Briar is simply next level with no information whatsoever needed to register and zero trust involved with anybody, not even a server. If you trust the person you're talking to, then that's really all you need to worry about. As one can expect, usability and features are where Briar falls short. It's only available for Android on mobile, but there is a desktop client. Briar is mainly only used for messaging, but recently got image support in beta. It also does have some group-oriented functionality designed for spreading information between circles of mutual friends. Either way, it's predominantly only for text messaging in this point in time. Don't expect to find audio and video calls or any other bells and whistles anytime soon. This experience is purely to keep you safe for the highest threat models. You can actually use it without even any internet. The pros to Briar are it's almost untouchable privacy and security-wise. Again, you can actually communicate with people without internet using Briar. It's that cool. The cons to Briar involve its usability, since it's very limited and also it being peer-to-peer -peer means both users have to be online at the same time for it to properly work. We have a very thorough Briar review that you should watch that dives really deep into this awesome tool if you really want to see what Briar's about, because honestly, um, this doesn't do it justice. And that is our imperfect list of our top five favorite messengers for you to try out. To recap, Matrix is great for federated communities and an overall trusted experience. Session feels a bit incomplete and slow, but has some really neat things going for it. Signal's overall still probably your best bet for a daily messenger, especially with people you know. It strikes a really good balance between privacy and usability, and Briar is what we reserve for extreme use cases. I don't know why you guys picked Telegram. What's your favorite messenger from this list, or is your favorite not even here? Leave us a comment below. We want to hear about it. Just don't say Telegram. Thank you all for watching. I want to thank our patrons. They're probably going down at the bottom of the screen at this point in time. We want to thank you all so much for supporting us. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Wow.